Hi folks, Mary here, and we're going to talk this time about the mole. Now, the mole is actually a unit of measure, and it is the standard international unit for amount of substance. It's one of those basic metric SI units. Um, it's not one that you've probably heard of unless you've taken chemistry some point in your past. It's very convenient for expressing the amount of reactants and products in a chemical reaction. The actual word mole has nothing to do with the furry little critters that dig in the ground. It actually is shorthand for molecular mass, and it is referred to as mole. That is the name of the unit. Um, chemists are a wacky lot, and hence they have sort of adopted as their uh, mascot these furry creatures that we refer to as moles because of the name of this unit. Now, one mole of a substance is the amount of that substance whose mass is equal to its formula or atomic mass in grams. Let me give you an example. If I take a look at oxygen, oxygen's atomic mass on the periodic table is 16.00 AMUs if I'm referring to one atom of oxygen. But if I have a mole of oxygen, because a mole is an amount of substance, if I have a mole of it, that means I'm going to have 16.00 grams of oxygen. A, a mole is an amount in the same way that one dozen is an amount. A dozen happens to be 12 of something. A mole happens to represent a much different number, and we'll refer to that in a few minutes. If I happen to have one mole of carbon, one mole of carbon has a mass of 12.01 grams. One carbon atom is 12.01 AMUs. So the numbers are the same. Units are very, very different. Mole has a gram of mass, and one atom is an AMU of mass. Chlorine, if I had individual chlorine atoms, a mole would be excuse me, 35.45 grams for a mole and 35.45 AMUs for individual atoms. Now we were in our last talk talking about formula mass or atomic or molecular mass. Water's molecular mass is 18.02 grams for one molecule, but if I happen to have a whole mole of water, it would be 18.02 grams. I apologize, I wrote the wrong unit there. Calcium carbonate, also known as chalk, one of those formula units, remember a formula unit basically just tells me I have an ionic compound, would be 100.09 AMUs. And if you're asking where did this number come from, we found those in that last talk. One mole of those would be 100.09 grams. And iron three sulfate, formula unit of it would be 399.21 AMUs, or a mole, 399.21 grams. So I'm hoping you see this relationship. It's the same number, atomic mass as molecular mass, but we're just going to change those units from AMUs to grams when we change the amount of substance we have. And that's what a mole is. It's a representation of amount of substance. Now, what moles allow us to do, is they allow us to count by weighing. If you ever go to a bulk can old-fashioned candy store and you're going to try and buy jelly beans or chocolate-covered peanuts or things like that, you do not buy them one at a time. If you take four little jelly beans up to the checkout, they're going to look at you like you're goofy. Um, they, you buy them by the quarter pound or the half pound or something like that. That's how you check out. Same thing at the hardboards, hardware store. You buy nails and bolts and nuts by weighing. They're, you put them in a bag, you put them on the scale, and that's how they calculate their price. This is commonly done when you're dealing with small items. Well, atoms are crazy, crazy small. We've talked about this in the past. So how do you figure out how many you've got? The easiest way is to count them by weighing them. But we needed a key. We needed some sort of a, a way to figure out how many are in a sample. And that 
gentleman who gave us that number was Emilio Avogadro. He lived in the early 1800s and he was working with gases. He found that if he took a sample of the gas whose mass was equal to the molecular mass from the periodic table, every sample had the same number of pieces. And that number of pieces is called Avogadro's number. So if we take the molecular mass of or atomic mass of helium and put it in a container, how many pieces or atoms are there going to be in there? And it's going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. If we have a molecular mass of water molecules and we put those in a container, how many pieces are going to be in there? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. But they happen to be molecules, not atoms. And that's why I use the term pieces because sometimes it's atoms, sometimes it's molecules, but it's still the same number of pieces if we have one mole of anything. And this is the key. Avogadro's number is the key to allow us to count by weighing or massing a sample. So grab your periodic table. I want to show you how this works. And the periodic table is such a magically fabulous device. Here's how this whole mole concept works. If I have one mole of the element lithium, lithium has an atomic mass of 6.94 grams. Now, if I have one mole of anything, it's going to contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So if I have one mole of lithium, it's going to contain that many atoms. If I have one mole of the element neon, on the periodic table, its mass is going to be 20.18 grams. Now, where did that number come from? That came from the periodic table and me reading its atomic mass from that table. How many atoms are going to be in that sample? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It's I mentioned this before, a mole is similar to a dozen. A dozen is 12, but one mole is this many. And if you have a mole of puppies, they're going to weigh an awful lot more than if you have a mole of, I don't know, fruit flies. They're going to weigh an awful lot less. So a mole of one thing doesn't weigh the same as a mole of another. They're just going to equal the same number, not the same mass. Now, if I have 10 moles of neon, what's the mass going to be? Now, we're not going to do the math. I just want to show you how to set it up. It's going to be 10 times the mass from the periodic table, 20.18 grams. And how many atoms are there going to be? 10 times Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, let's check and make sure you're understanding. Hit pause. Fill in the next two, and then we're going to come back and do them together. All right, let's see if you've got this. If you look up silicon on the periodic table, one mole of silicon is going to have a mass equal to silicon's atomic mass, 28.09 grams. How many atoms of silicon will there be? Well, one mole of anything, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. If I have 17 moles of silicon... How many, what's the mass of that going to be? Again, I don't care about doing the mass. The math, I want you to be able to see it. 17 times 28.09 grams. And how many atoms is this going to be? 17 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. You starting to catch on? All right, let's take this one step further. And let's talk about compounds. If we look at oxygen, oxygen is a diatomic molecule, always comes two oxygen molecules bonded together. Oxygen on its own is 16.00 grams O2, would be times two of those. So the mass of one mole of oxygen, because there's two of them, and where did the 16 come from? That's that atomic mass from the periodic table. The mass of one O2 molecule would be 32 grams. Now, if I have one mole of O2, how many molecules will that be? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Because one mole of anything contains Avogadro's number, 
within it. How many atoms are going to be in one mole of O2? Think this through. There are two atoms per mole, so it's going to be two times Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Let's try water. If I have one mole of water, what's the mass? Well, earlier we talked about the mass of water is 18.02 grams. If I have one mole of anything, how many pieces? You gotcha. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, Avogadro's number. One mole of anything contains Avogadro's number of pieces. Okay, so that's how many molecules, how many atoms? Well, let's take a look at water. One oxygen, two hydrogen, three atoms. So there are three atoms per mole, so this is going to be three times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Let's do another one. What if I have eight moles? Eight moles. What's the mass going to be? Eight times 1802. How many molecules? Well, each mole contains that many pieces. So how many molecules? Eight times Avogadro's number. I'm going to put beep, ditto marks because I'm getting lazy. How many atoms? Well, each molecule, so there's eight for the eight moles. There's three atoms in each one of these. And then there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Yeah. All right. Hit pause. Try the next two for chalk, calcium carbonate, and then we'll go through them together. Okay. One mole of calcium carbonate. We found the mass earlier today, 100.09 grams. How many molecules? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. How many atoms? Well, let's count. One, two, plus three, so Five times Avocadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, now what if we have four moles, four moles of chalk, calcium carbonate? What's the mass going to be? Five times the mass of one. How many molecules? Well, we've got four moles, so... Did I say five? Ah, uh, Mary messed up. How about four? There we go. I heard you yelling at me. All right, how many molecules? Four times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And then how many atoms? Well, atoms we've got four moles. Five atoms per mole times Avogadro's number, and there we go. As you can see, my friends, a clever can person can do many of these calculations in their head. You can also see that eventually the situations are going to get tricky and they're going to get tricky to the point that eventually you're going to get confused and I get confused too when it's like fractions of moles and moles and molecules blah 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 blah. So what we're going to do next time is we're going to talk about how do you handle it when you start dealing with fractions and weird and crazy stuff. I'll show you some nice techniques so you always get these right. All right, see you then. Bye-bye.